Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Michelle, and if you like cleaning motivation and organization ideas, then click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on a new video. Have you ever said before having kids that you would never have toys completely take over your beautiful spaces and your living room, dining room, or your whole house for that matter? Well, join the club. I was one of those people before having kids and in the blink of an eye, I can barely even see my living room floor. In this video, I'm going to be doing some major toy decluttering, purging, and organizing. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video where I will share five expert tips on maintaining the organization and helping your child keep organized too. I will share my step-by-step -step process on how I'm decluttering because let's be real, the hardest step is just getting started. So let's go. The first thing you're going to want to do is figure out where to start. I'm starting in the playroom because that is the place where all the toys are going. That is my storage spot. So I want to make sure that I have enough room in the playroom so that I can bring all of the toys from around the house back to where they belong, which is the playroom. Next, you're going to want to take all of your toys out. So if you have any storage bins or boxes, make sure that you dump all of the toys out so that you know exactly what you have. Dumping out the baskets, I noticed that there was tons of small toys that were all over the place. So now I am just sorting through those toys and putting them into categories of where it, what belongs with what. The products that I bought for this project total were under $100. And that is because one item, which was a four drawer shelf, was $40 from Ikea, but that is totally optional. You don't have to do that. The main thing that I do recommend is getting small plastic containers where you can actually see the toys through them. So I purchased a total of three small ones and three medium sized ones. Having things clear and visible actually helps see what is inside of the tub so that your child can determine what they actually want to play with. So these are some of my old movies that I was just randomly storing here because I didn't have a place for them. So I'm going to actually store them in a clear plastic container and put them in the attic because they do not belong here. Next, I am going through each basket one by one, dumping it out and sorting through it. I'm repeating this process with every basket that we have in the playroom. Your most important pile is going to be your donate pile and your trash pile because it is so important to declutter all of the toys that you don't need and if the toy is still working and they've just outgrown it, then you can definitely make use of it by donating it to someone who definitely needs it. Now that I have completed the most important step, which is clearing out the space that I need to in the actual playroom, I can start bringing up the toys from the living room up into the already semi-organized playroom. Now I am going 
going to go through each basket one by one. First, by completely emptying it out and seeing what I have. Next, I am creating piles or categories of each item. So by sorting through each item, I am looking at all of the toys. If they are broken or mismatched or I can't find the other half of it, then I am throwing it away. If it is a good toy that they no longer play with or that they have outgrown, then I am putting it in the donate pile. I also have tons of little baby toys that I may no longer need for right now. So I'm also creating a pile for baby toys that they have outgrown that I can store away. I will have to admit that this is probably going to be the hardest step. And I say that because there is a lot of sentimental toys or memories that you have of your child playing with a specific toy. And even though they no longer play with it, you have a hard time letting go of it. After doing lots of research and studying the different art of decluttering, I stumbled across Nikki Boyd's book and she has created a decluttering guide to help you make a decision on items that you should either keep or decide to get rid of. In her decluttering guide, you ask yourself a series of questions to help you determine whether or not you should keep the toy or you should get rid of it. Some of the questions you can do is look at the toy and determine, do you need it? If you do, then you should definitely keep it. If you don't need it, but love it, then you can continue to ask yourself questions. Do you have space for it? Does it have value? Do you know someone else that can use it? By asking yourself some of these questions, it can really help you determine some of the items that you should really be getting rid of. Once you actually start the decluttering process, it's really amazing to see, especially for me, how many toys that we actually had. We've accumulated toys just from birthday parties, Christmas, Easter baskets, and it's just so overwhelming to think how many toys it really is. almost done with the dumping and categorizing process it seems like so much but actually a lot of these are piles of things that are already categorized I just have to put them in their right place I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes a quick tip when categorizing your toys is to already know what type of zones you want to create in your space a zone in the playroom is basically just a designated space where your child's going to perform that activity. In my playroom, I plan to create four to five zones. One is a reading area where they can actually sit down and read books. Another zone would be a place where they can play with small toys or play with different types of blocks or puzzles. Another zone is going to be an art area where they can do crowns, markers, and draw. And lastly, because they are into baby dolls, then I have a whole area where they can play with their baby dolls, all of the doll accessories, and so forth. Because I already have these zones in mind, that is how I am categorizing their toys. So brave and so stupid, just like the movies. How it's gonna stay in the fight with you Just thinking we would do this until we couldn't do it Each and every high, every night with you You and me
me so clueless. Now that I have everything out of the baskets and sorted and decluttered, it is time to put everything back in its designated spot. These are toys that my girls, 16 month old and three year old, have outgrown. So I am storing them in this container and going to probably donate them to a friend who just had a baby and can use some baby toys. This pile is all stuffed animals, so I am going through these stuffed animals and sorting ones that are no longer working if they had some kind of voice activation to them or sorting the ones that they no longer play with and this way we can donate them to someone who might need them and keep the ones that are meaningful to the girls. are some of the toys that go to the kitchen downstairs. I have decided to throw some of these toys out or put them in the donation pile and have the girls only play with a few of them at a time. These baskets go to a shelf that I got from Ikea, which you'll see a little bit later. This area I am designating to all things baby dolls. So I am sorting through all of the baby doll accessories, all of the actual baby dolls, anything that has to do with purses, shoes, makeup, anything girly is going into this shelf. I also got from Ikea which was under five dollars I believe and this is for any type of play jewelry or any type of girly stuff that they can use this container is for small toys mostly different types of frozen toys um, and anything that they use that is very small this container is for animals cars dinosaurs Kind of the boyish toys but things that they still like to play with this container is for blocks i'm sorting them in the rainbow color so blocks bugs and anything extra that they play with so now that i am done containing all of the small toys i am going to place them back on the shelf another expert tip that i learned is to only contain 80 percent of the space meaning make sure you still have 20% of the space available. So if you noticed when I was storing those containers that I did not fill them jam packed to the top, I just stored about 80% of the space. Same with this area. I'm just placing one toy in each shelf. That way I still have about 20 or more percent of the space available. Moving on to the reading section, I have tried to color code the books as best I can so that it's easy to find and put away based on color. Now that we have put together this shelf from Ikea, those baskets will go in there, but I am also creating the zone for baby doll space. So in these baskets, I am just storing a lot of the larger toys and I am putting anything that is girly related, baby doll related, accessories, shoes, purses, is all going into the corner zone. Just the two of us and we could stay up all night, kissing under street lights. Next, 
I got this three tier cart from Ikea for $29 and this area is where all of the art supplies are going. So all of the crowns, our markers and coloring books and stickers are all going on this cart next to the table where they have their own little art area. The stuffed animals and the learning center, the blocks, the puzzles, the small toys are all going underneath the TV where I'm creating a zone where they can learn and be creative. to go over five easy steps to help maintain the space. If you plan on rotating your toys, I recommend storing the toys outside of the child's reach, whether in a closet or on the top of a shelf. Next tip is to store larger toys into larger baskets, such as your stuffed animals or anything that is too big to fit on a shelf or in a smaller tub. If these larger baskets become free-for-alls where you start throwing smaller toys in there, it will become a bottomless pit like you saw earlier in this video. My third tip is to encourage problem solving in your child by leaving puzzles unsolved. When it's unsolved, then it helps them try to fix the problem. You can make the puzzle easier by storing the numbers closer together where they're supposed to go. This way the child doesn't get stressed out and is really motivated on the task to solve the puzzle. Next tip is to label everything. If you have a label in a designated spot for each toy, then you're more likely to put it back where it's supposed to go and not just cause a bunch of clutter by throwing it in a bin or somewhere that it doesn't belong. And last tip goes along with labeling and this is color coding. So this is my downstairs area where I actually have toys that they're able to play with downstairs. If I'm practicing the toy rotation, then I may not necessarily label each item as a specific toy but I will color code. So if I am rotating a toy and I'm putting the books in the pink dot, then they know that for this month that all of the books belong in the pink bin. Color coding also helps children who cannot read. So my kids are very young toddlers and they are motivated to put things back based on color where labels are not easily readable to them. By creating this color coding system in our living room area, it allowed us to get all of the toys off of the living room floor. It allowed space to put my Christmas tree where it actually belongs in the corner and allows them to rotate toys downstairs. I am also using the color coding system upstairs after I have labeled all of the bins where the small toys and the blocks and the puzzles go then I am creating a color coding system so that they know which toys belong to which color. This is so helpful and definitely creates a system to maintain organization and really get an idea of how many toys you're accumulating and when it's time to declutter toys. The way in which I color coordinate is just using the rainbow method. So I learned this concept off of the home edit. Just start with red and end with your blues and violets following the colors of the rainbow. This is how I usually start with from left to right. It takes the confusion out of everything. It is super simple to remember and it also helps your child learn the colors of the rainbow. Now I'll give you a full tour of the playroom now that we have clean, organized, and created a system to maintain the organization. The two baskets next to the shelf just hold some larger toys, stuffed animals, and puppets. The little bookshelf is one reading area where they can go. This area is all baby doll and baby doll accessories. This is the art area with crowns, coloring books, and stickers. This area is for building blocks, small toys, puzzles, and music. Thank 
you guys so much for watching. I hope that you got a lot of inspiration and ideas on organizing your child's playroom and motivation to declutter. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video.